I've been working with brain measurement and neurofeedback devices for over the past decade. If you're the type of person who is interested in brain red light therapy with neurofeedback training, chances are that lately you felt your brain isn't firing on all cylinders. Maybe your mind wanders, your thoughts are fuzzy, you're not as creative as you used to be, your motivation is low, or you just feel like you're dragging along throughout the day. But what if there was a way to power up your brain at the cellular level so that it has more energy and with that energy, you're better able to train your brain to have better focus and control over your thoughts as a result. Well, that's what we're seeing right now when you take red light therapy and combine it with neurofeedback training paradigms. Last month, I sat down with an expert on this, Penny Jean Gracefire, who's been doing neurofeedback clinical work for over 20 years. She really helped me sharpen my understanding of what a red light therapy protocol looks like. I wanted to take this opportunity to break it down here so that you don't have to listen to the full interview interview, but I do have the full interview available if you want to take a listen as well. So as far as red light therapy goes, we've been working very closely with V-Light, which is really leading the way in quality of brain red light therapy. They have several different devices that use specialized LEDs that shine light at a specific pulse and wavelength in order to get through the bone of your skull and stimulate the cortex of your brain. Now don't worry, this is non-ionizing light. It's not going to hurt you. And it's basically the same near infrared light that we get from the sun, but it's focused in a specific way that can reach your brain tissue. We're not aware of any side effects from this type of stimulation, but we're not just flashing a light and hoping for changes. This has been conclusively shown that shining red light at 810 nanometers will stimulate the mitochondria of your brain to generate more ATP, which is the main energy currency of your cells. More ATP means more fuel, and when your neurons have more fuel, they can fire more consistently, communicate better, and recover faster. The red light also causes displacement of a molecule called nitric oxide. During certain times, nitric oxide can bind to receptors on the mitochondria, and it has been found that the red light not only stimulates more ATP production, but it also causes the nitric oxide to be released from the receptor sites on the mitochondria. The nitric oxide then diffuses across the cellular membrane and into interstitial spaces and encourages vasodilation in the surrounding tissues, which brings more oxygen and nutrients to the cell, which further promotes more energy production. So that makes a lot of sense. We got more energy for the neurons to be firing at a higher capacity. As you can imagine, that probably leads to heightened awareness, more energy, more motivation, and faster processing speed to handle all of the information that we are exposed to every day. That makes a lot of sense, but Penny Jean said something that really stuck with me. She said that powering up the brain is only half of the equation because your brain actually needs two different things to operate at peak performance because your brain needs number one the power but it also needs connectivity your brain needs both of these things to operate at peak performance the energy or power is the ATP that comes from the red light stimulation and the connectivity comes from the interaction between brain circuits this is how the different regions of your brain talk to each other and perform complex cognitive tasks Penny Jean brought up this analogy that I really liked. She was talking about how your smartphone really needs two different things. It needs the battery power, but it also needs the cellular signal for communication. If you have a connection to the cell tower, but not enough battery power, the communication is weak and inefficient. Your phone becomes slow. It can't process information. And this is what you see in people's brains. The different brain regions need to communicate to each other to perform complex tasks. Modern neuroscience has really moved into understanding the brain is a complex system of different circuits. When you're doing things like having internal thought processes, but then switching your attention to an external task, those are multiple different networks and circuits that are interacting with each other. And you have to do this to pay attention to a lecture, to drive a car, and basically all the other tasks that we're expected to do from day to day. And again, you need enough power in your brain to process all that information coming in, but you also need different regions of the brain to communicate and form a comprehensive picture and understanding of what's happening in front of you. If something happens, you have to absorb that information, process it, and then respond to that stimuli. Now at the basic level, red light therapy is helping you increase the energy levels of your mitochondria, which are basically the battery of your brain. But then 
harnessing that extra energy, we can use neurofeedback training to increase your brain's connectivity. So the end result after some training is that you have a flexible and responsive brain to the environment. That's when you actually just go from feeling better to actually rebuilding better wiring, which can really be done at any age. So at the most basic level, you really can get a lot of benefit from the entry level red light therapy device, which is the intranasal LED. Because the bone behind your nose is so thin, you can shine the red light through your nasal cavity and coincidentally, your frontal lobe of your brain is right there. Your frontal lobe is responsible for attention, emotional control, and decision-making. It really is the part of the brain that is one of the most important for adult humans to make mature decisions, for example. And we can use that basic entry-level LED to really power neurofeedback because it's going to increase your attention. Now, if you're worried about brain longevity and developing dementia, for example, you probably want to do red light therapy throughout the whole brain to get the full benefit benefit of clearing out toxic byproducts and improving circulation. And at that level, you would want to upgrade to the Neuro Duo 4, which has full brain coverage with a particular focus on the default mode network. This allows you to power up more regions as well as clear out more toxic byproducts all throughout the brain. Could also be good for reducing inflammation after traumatic brain injury or concussion. And then if you want to get really technical, and I would recommend this for people that really want to do this at the highest level or are interested in things like peak, peak brain performance, take a look at the NeuroPro 2. It's not absolutely necessary, but it does have the highest likelihood of getting dramatic results with red light therapy. Because what you have is more L LEDs all across the scalp, you've got the intranasal channels, and you have the ability to customize down to individual LED panels and frequencies all across the different brain frequencies like alpha, gamma, and theta, and program the device to do whatever you want. You can even run batch protocols that sweep through different frequencies from front to back of your brain, for instance. One of the protocols for meditation training starts down at eight hertz for a calming effect, and then slowly steps up to 40 hertz over the course of about 30 minutes to rev you up into higher and higher oscillation frequencies. That's not just red light stimulation for increasing blood flow, that's what we call neuromodulation, meaning that the pulses of the red light is actually coaxing your brainwave oscillations in certain directions. You can even use the NeuroPro 2 to stimulate different areas of the brain at different frequencies to influence network connectivity like neurofeedback does. As you can imagine, this can get quite complicated pretty quickly, and it's not always needed at that level. So I advocate starting at a simple entry level LED intranasal device, seeing how you feel on that, and then slowly working your way up in complexity. Now, if you have a really serious case of cognitive decline and you can afford it, Maybe you wanna just jump right up to the NeuroPro 2, but you really want to use brain mapping along with this because with that quantitative EEG brain map, you can actually see where different levels are high or low in the brain, and that gives you the data and the information to create the custom protocols from the NeuroPro 2, and that's where you're really going to get the highest returns on your investment. Penny Jean made it clear, if you're going to run customized protocols, you really need to know which parts of your brain are underpowered and which ones are overactive active, and that snapshot of quantitative EEG tells you where to stimulate, what frequencies to use, and whether your brain needs more power or better connectivity. Now, if you're using these red light therapies, most people just want the instant results, like it's a magic pill, but it is important to realize that this might take a little time. I asked Penny Jean what she saw the biggest mistakes people made when they started using red light therapy, and this is what she had to say. Number one, make sure to document what you're doing. If you're not tracking what protocol you're using or how much sleep you've got, or what your mood is like during the day, you're going to forget with time and you're not gonna have a, as good of an understanding of what the red light therapy is doing to you if you didn't journal every day. Number two is when you're starting red light therapy with neurofeedback training, try to reduce other variables as much as you can. Don't be taking five new supplements and trying three different brain training apps at the same time. You wanna introduce different things slowly so you know what kind of effect they're having on you. And number three, don't expect that red light therapy to increase the energy of your brain if it doesn't have the materials that it needs to work with, meaning that you need to hydrate, you need to drink enough water, you need to be eating protein and getting your nutrients, and making sure that you have your basic nutrients 
nutrition covered so that your brain has the building blocks to use once it's stimulated with the red light therapy and encouraged to create more ATP, which is the energy currency of your brain. At the end of the day, why does this all matter? Well, life is getting more complex. We're under a lot of pressure. There's more stress. Information overload is worse than it ever has been before. Penny Jean called it complexity fatigue. And it is true that the tools that we used 20 years ago to support mental health treatment aren't cutting it anymore. There's too many side effects, not enough efficacy. We need faster recovery for the brain. We need better sleep. We need to train our brains to be more flexible, better focused, and more powerful. And I think after all these years of looking at all these different technologies that the red light therapy combined with neurofeedback can help you do that if you do it right. So if you've been experimenting with red light therapy or you're thinking about leveling up to use neurofeedback in combination with red light therapy, it's time to get really intentional. Make sure that you document what's happening get a brain map if you can, and use different tools like neurofeedback or the NeuroPro2 to target different regions with the right frequencies. And that's why I think red light therapy can help you do that. If you want just a quick intro to these concepts and ask me more questions about red light and neurofeedback training as well as brain maps, I do have a five-day challenge called Sharper Every Day, and there's a link below so you can check that out and see if there would be value there for you. Or if you wanna jump right into brain mapping and red light therapy treatment, I do have an eight week program called Stay Sharp. And if you're interested in that advanced program, just email us at hello at techforsych.com and we'll send you to the right information. This really is the future of mental health and cognitive performance. If you want to see how I'm setting up these protocols in real time or what kind of brain data I'm tracking before and after, make sure to hit subscribe and check out the NeuroPro 2 deep dive coming soon. I'll see you on the next one.